Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. They have solutions for connecting wires to other wires, terminals, or anything else you can think of. There will be a short video explaining more about them at the end. Now enjoy our regular video. Hey, what's happening guys? You got something interesting for you to look at today. Take a look at this circuit here. We have two LEDs, two resistors, one transistor, it's an NPN 2N2222, and uh, the LEDs are alternately blinking. How am I doing it? Well, there's a trick. But just to show you, there's no camera trick or any foolery involved. Let's zoom out here. Here is the uh, power cable. You can see it's connected directly to the power supply. It's giving it 6 volts. There's nothing else connected to it. So, have you figured out the trick yet? It's not that hard. What I'm doing is one of these LEDs is a standard 5 millimeter LED. The other one is one of these uh, flashing LEDs. So let me show you the circuit and then we'll talk about how it works. So here's the circuit. We have our 6 volt VCC coming in and it is simultaneously feeding the flashing LED and a 220 I don't know why I wrote 222, probably because I just wrote the 222s there. This is 220 ohm current limiting resistor for the standard LED. So look how it goes here. We have the flash LED taking power directly from VCC, then going to a 47 ohm resistor, simply for current control, down to ground. Then we have our 220 ohm resistor, also for current control, going into the anode of the LED, going directly to ground. So if we go like this and eliminate that part of the circuit, then what you end up with is this. You have our VCC rail here. It is applying 6 volts to the flashing LED, which is using... A 47 ohm resistor just to kind of limit the current so we don't have any thermal runaway or anything so let's take into account the transistor and how this works so as our current comes down from the battery or power supply through the LED when it energizes this LED, it now flashes, which means the current is going like this, because this is the easiest path for the current to flow. However, when this is in its off state, because remember, there is, a, there is a small IC in here that's telling the flow. So when this is in its off state, the current can now flow this way, which is now the easiest way to flow, into the base of this transistor, the 2N2222, opening up the path between collector and emitter and letting this guy flow. And there it is. Basically, when this one is on, it's taking all the power, so this uh, base is off. When this is off, the base is on, it allows this one to go. It's that simple. Just a little electronics tricky, and if you're wondering where I got the circuit from, it is from Forrest Mims' book, Timer, Op-Amp, and Optoelectronic Circuits and Product Projects. And there it is right there. Just like in the book. Just like Forrest used to make. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, 
please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace. We've all been there, right? We've all spliced a set of wires together and either used some electrical tape or a wire nut or something to connect them together. There's always a better way. If you need them permanently connected, I suggest the solder stick, uh, solder connectors where you heat them up with a heat gun and they melt together. But if you need something a little less permanent, spade connectors. We have a male and a female connector which fit together uh, like so. You crimp those onto the ends of your wires and you, you look like you know what you're doing. And have you ever come across something like this where the wires have been stripped? Focus. And just crushed underneath the screw to hold them in place? Well, time and temperature will cause those wires to move and flex and eventually come loose, which can definitely lead to a hazard. In that case, something like the solder stick ring connectors are just what the doctor ordered. Crimp these guys on your wire. They have them for all different size wires. Heat them up. This heat shrink will shrink down, giving you a nice insulated connection to your wire that you can then put underneath that screw and have a nice professional looking solution. Solder stick. You can see their website right there. www.solderstick.com Check them out. See if they have a project or a product that works for you.